I thought our guys really uh, competed, uh, showed a lot of guts and heart, and again, perseverance against Ohio State in a difficult uh, environment, going down 15 and fought our way back. Uh, looked a little sluggish in, in the beginning of that first half. It was a quick turnaround from Northwestern Ohio State. Uh, but we finished the half off really strong. And I thought the second half was was pretty positive uh, for the most part, other than the final outcome. Again, they took they made their runs, but we continue to battle back and take the lead. Uh, 71-70, I believe. Um, and we had our we had our share of chances um, to, to win that game. I thought we really executed well down the stretch uh, offensively. We only had one minor thing defensively. And what we needed to work on in film was fouls. We had some ill-advised fouls there uh, to put them on the line uh, that really helped them. They didn't really score a basket other than Young's basket. They made a lot of their points at the end there from the free throw line. So we have to play hard together without fouling. And, and that's a work in progress when you have some young guys who are trying. Um, I'll just touch on this real quick. You're watching the Michigan State, Michigan, I'm sorry, Penn State game from however long ago that was. It felt like two years ago. And you look at your team now, man, we've gotten a lot better. The guys have really grown up. Freshmen are really starting to get tougher. Uh, Lamar's playing real consistent. Josh Reeves played a great game against Ohio State. Hopefully that will continue as we head down the stretch here. What has um, the response to Ra? been um you know did he put that on himself for the miss layup like how how has he maybe responded in the time since and what's what's your approach i guess to, to handling a situation yeah like that? i think present moment he was really down and upset um felt like he let the the team down and i thought lamar's reaction was absolutely fantastic from a leadership standpoint uh lamar grabbed him right away i grabbed him right after that uh, I applauded him in the huddle for putting himself in that situation. You know, uh, what's Michael Jordan say? I missed uh, thousands of shots, but at least he has the courage to put himself in that situation to take the shot. So I think he'll learn from it. We watch film. Uh, he, he's, he's awesome. He gets back in the gym and he works on that shot. Of course he does. But I think he's going to be fine. And I think he'll respond really well tomorrow night. What's the difference between where the offense is now versus where it was this time of year last year? Is, is is there a certain amount of going back to square one when you add new guys in? How long does it take for young guys to kind of get farther along, not in the playbook, so to speak, because it's basketball, but sort of schematically, mentally farther along? So mentally, I would say, you know, we still have those moments. The last three games, we haven't shot the three well. Purdue we did, right? Was that one of the three? All right, so the last two games, we haven't shot the ball particularly well from three, and I think that can deflate some, some of us sometimes. And we got to break through that. That, that can't our, – our, our shots can't dictate our effort, right? Uh, so we'll, we'll continue to work on that. Uh, and we're getting – I believe we're getting good shots. We are. Um, they just have to slow down a little bit in certain times of the game. Like, Miles hits a big one, didn't hit a shot the, the entire game, hits that big corner three. That, to me, was a breakthrough. That was a breakthrough. Purdue, he did the same thing. A little bit of a breakthrough. And if we can continue that with him and Ra, right now, statistically, they're our best three-point shooters, uh, along with Josh, who's, who's hovering right above the 35% mark. Um, we got to count on those guys to make shots. But it is a, a mentally grueling stretch uh, in February. Um, so we got to continue to learn. We, like Tony made the game so easy for everybody. You forget that because you're, you're comparing last year and comparisons, the thief of joy. So T Tony made it so simple because he commanded a double team. Lamar's wide open. Mike gets lob dunks. Josh is wide open. Lamar's commanding the double team now. Even if we don't think he might score, at least he's commanding the double team. So we're hoping to get that rotation to get open shots. But Tony made the game a little bit easier for everybody. And I think Jamari's starting to figure that out. Ross starting to figure that out. And Lamar's got to continue doing what he's doing. And from a housekeeping standpoint, is there a mechanism for you to have any idea how much of a one on the, on the shot clock is left? Did you know going in there whether it was a full one, a half one? I know there's no decimal points in college, but... But is there... Did you trying you, to get me in trouble? Then? No, I'm, I'm genuinely curious if there's any way for them to communicate to you whether you've I got a tenth of a this, second. And I think this is important for Penn Staters to know this. I grabbed the officials and I begged them to look at the clock specifically two or three times 
because I felt like it, there was a quick trigger there. Um, before, even before the shot, that we w a well-executed play again to get Lamar a, a, a layup. Great screen by Regier. Great, p a little short, but still nonetheless pretty good pass by Josh. Um, but right before that, I, I, I asked him, please look at the clock one more time because you're going to adjust the game clock. Don't you think you should adjust the shot clock? But there's, as Rose just said, we don't have that in the shot clock. Right, but just to be clear from what I think what Ben was saying is, is, there, is it physically possible to adjust the shot clock? Is that something they could, could have even done? No, I mean, there's nothing. My understanding is that under a second, they can't add, in, unless the they game clock. They could add a full second. Yeah, unless the game clock is more than a second added, they can't add more time on the shot clock. And there's no decimal points. Yeah. So you don't know if that one second is a whole second or whether it's a tenth of a second because they're not adding to the shot clock because they didn't add a second to the game clock. I yeah, we, we'll have to check on that. Yeah. To follow up, do you just sometimes scratch your head and say, Every single thing that could happen possibly happens in how do you, you tell me you've been doing this longer than me. <laughs> Have you seen this has been some wild stuff. Rutgers uh, shot clock violation to a jump ball. Uh, Purdue end of game situation. This end of game situation. It's been wild. We, we've seen some really interesting stuff towards the end of games. And, and look. We're turning the, we miss free throws, there's turnovers, there's a bunch of mistakes throughout the game. So it's unfortunate that the last two minutes get magnified the way they do. Um, but, you know, we've had some bad bounces. we got to create our own luck, though, and we, we need to earn that. And, and uh, what clicked for Josh in that game, and how, do you, how much do you need him to be that Josh mm. th the rest of the way here? Yeah, I felt like Josh and Lamar uh, finally played well together. Lamar's second half, Josh throughout the game. I thought Rogier, after a, a poor start, four or five minute start, really showed me some mental toughness by coming back the way he did. I was really proud of that breakthrough. Um, we need a little bit more from Mike. Uh, we know that, and, and some of the other guys off the bench. Um, <laughs> we need Josh to be that consistent for 40 minutes. And yes, you could say it was a three-quarter court press, and you, yes, you could say it was the way they attacked it. But I just thought his instincts were there. He was a step ahead of, a, of the play. He looked really sure, really confident of, of himself. So we, we need Josh to play like that, to think like that. And, and if he does that, we're, we're a very good team. Myron's playtime has fluctuated as the season's gone on. How have you seen him develop, uh, you know, not really getting those consistent minutes, but being asked to come in in big games or big time situations? <laughs> Look, Northwestern, he gave us great five minutes. Um, I went to him on the bench in early in the second half. I said, I'm going to put you in. Just be ready. And I didn't put him in right away. I waited, I waited. And then I went down to him again. I said, look, I'm going to put you in. Are you ready? Can you handle this? And he's like, absolutely. And I give the kid a lot of credit. Because when you don't play the entire game, and then I put you in late in the second half in a one-possession game, I mean, that's, that's pretty amazing that he's able to handle that. Um, and I think he's handling it well. Like he was already in today lifting and, and getting himself prepared um, for, for whatever the minutes will be tomorrow night. So and that's what we can expect from him. And what led into your decision to put him in? Like you said, it's hard for him to come in for the first time in a game, in a one-session game, late game. What, what led into that I decision? I just didn't feel like our, the seven, eight, nine guys were really doing what I needed them to do, and he's been playing really well in practice. So I wanted to give him an opportunity because he has been rebounding the ball. And he hit a big three against Northwestern. So give him a shot. Michigan is, um, I mean, at, at pretty much any metric you look at, one of the top defensive teams in the country, I mean, they're like second in you know, opponent's field goal percentage, second in defensive efficiency. What is it about them when you watch them on film or taking away from you know, the first meeting? What is it about you know, them defensively that makes it so hard to play against? I would say Simpson is a pit bull. Uh, Teske is probably underrated as a, as a player in general, but really a defensive specialist. And now he's scoring a little bit. Um, Poole and Matthews are incredibly long. Um, and the freshman, I'll call him Iggy, um, you know, he's, he's long as well. So they're, they're big at every spot. They're quick at every spot. They really guard you. Uh, they really take away angles. Um, they really press up on you. They try to take you out of what you want to do. Uh, if I go back to our game, I think we hurt ourselves. We had 18 turnovers in the game. The first four, it was 25-20 the first four minutes. We just went on a turnover barrage that really helped them extend the lead. If we can take care of the ball a little bit better, 
uh, in that game, it, it, it could have been a different story, at least another one possession game. So tomorrow night, we really got to take care of the ball. And is this, I mean, obviously, I'm sure you guys would like to, you know, score as many points as possible. But in this kind of game with both teams, I would say being like defensive first teams, this is kind of the game where if you're going to win it, you're going to have to like muck it up a little bit. It, we, we might have to grind it out a little bit. Now, they, they've scored against Rutgers. Uh, I think Rutgers is a very good defensive team. They didn't really score against Wisconsin because that's what Wisconsin does, but Matthews played really well at 18. Um, so, you know what? We're going to have to grind it a little bit. We're going to have to get stops. Most importantly, we've got to rebound the ball, and we have to take care of the basketball. We can't, we can't have 18 turnovers because they don't hurt themselves. right? Statistically, it says they don't foul, and they don't turn the ball over. So recently, we've been getting ourselves to the free throw line at a pretty good clip. That's got to continue. And it'd be nice. We shoot the ball better at home. It would be nice to see us make some threes. We talk a lot about how Josh is a little bit inconsistent on the offensive end. Um, and it felt like early in the game against Ohio State, he was getting his offense from his defensive efforts, getting steals and transition dunks and layups. How much do you remind him that uh, obviously he's, you need him to be a contributor in offense, but in maybe in order to get himself going, to focus on defense first and get your points from your defense. You sure you weren't in my film session yesterday? I basically said to the team, what cuts did we run for Josh to get four dunks? What was the cuts? And I started naming cuts, just being smart. And um, they're like, none. I said, exactly. Our defense has to dictate our offense, especially if we can get easy ones off the three-quarter court press or some of the trapping stuff that we do. Um, that, that's what it needs to be. And that really got Josh, I think, Josh going, and it got the team going, uh, specifically in the second half. I mean, there were, there were big-time plays, big-time deflections. Um, but he needs to continue to do that, and he needs to do it without fouling. You know, he still got into some foul trouble where I had to go deep into the bench. It would be nice if he could do it, you know, with just two fouls. And how much is he – maybe becoming a team leader in that aspect and just emphasizing your message about defense because it feels like when the confidence is evident when he's being active on the defensive end getting steals and dunks because he's got the quick trigger um, on catch and, do, catch and shoot threes and things like that. So how much have you seen him talk to the team like, look, this is, I'm, I'm proof of, you, get, you play hard on defense and you get confident on the offensive end as well. You know what I would say? I would say he's doing it by actions. You know, what do you have, five steals in the game? I think he's doing it by actions. He had a bunch of deflections. We chart deflections. He had a bunch. So I think he's doing it more by actions um, because he needs to do it consistently every single day. Um, the thing that I noticed was Jamari and Lamar's loudness. You could hear them uh, second half Ohio State. You could hear them throughout the Northwestern game the entire time. So as long as those guys are nice and loud and continue to help each other out and be great teammates. I think our defense is, is really good. It can be one of the better defenses in the Big Ten. Is, <clears throat> does the coach that you're going against impact your scout and your scripts and your decision-making? Because I'd say John Buland's probably one of the better coaches in America. No doubt. And he impacts the game, I would say, in ways that maybe some coaches don't. Does it change how you prepare to play a team by the guy that's on the bench at all? Not from a, oh, my gosh, it's John Beeline standpoint, <laughs> but, like, do decisions become quicker? Do th Are things different when you're coaching against No, like you know what? I've been uh, competing versus John Beeline since Lemoyne when I was at Philadelphia Textile. So I actually uh, look forward to going against his, his team's I feel like we have a good grasp of what they like to do and how he likes to do it. Very simple. You know, it's, it, there's, it's not too complex. He puts the ball in his best player's hands so they can make plays, and they got shooters everywhere, and they do a great job of spacing. And give him credit for his simplicity uh, on how he does things. Um, that's what makes him such an amazing coach. Um, but, you know, because I've, I've known him so long and I've competed him so long, it's, it's the next game on the schedule. And for Mike, how do you get him to utilize his athleticism offensively the same way that he can defensively? Because it seems like what he can do on the defensive end with his body is a little different than what he does on the offensive end. Is there yeah, a way to – You know what, I'm just looking for some consistency right now. I think we just need Mike to play. Get, if it's going to be 20 minutes, if it's going to be 18, if it's going to be 25, give us some consistency on both sides of the floor. You know, offensively, make sure you get to your spots and hold those spots. Defensively, ball screen defense. 
uh, communication on, on screens and dribble handoffs, things of that nature. That, that's what we're looking for the most. Just a little bit of consistency, one day at a time for him. I think, it's, I think it's fair to say that during games, you show the most emotion on some of the hustle plays that your team makes, whether it's a charge or a, an offensive rebound um, that leads to, to a, kick, uh, a second chance three. Uh, obviously, Jamari made a pretty pretty impressive hustle play against Ohio State, chasing down Jackson and poking that ball free. Obviously, not being there, I didn't get to see your action um, live. But what, even watching film the next day, what, did, what does that play do when you're watching film with the guys and how much do you emphasize these are the types of plays that we want to make and this is how Penn State basketball should be played? I think that play just shows you how hard these kids are playing and how Jamari's really developing into a leader, a defensive specialist. Even even though Edwards had darn near 40, I thought when Jamari was on him, he did a really good job against them. I think Jamari's been defending. He's been talking. He's been working hard at his leadership. Uh, when we're in the film room and we watch that play, the guys went crazy um, because that's something that we work on. Uh, I know that shocks everybody in this room, but we do work on dive from behind because we do think they can be winning plays when you're in a one-possession game. And we have been in one-possession games, and that helped us. Uh, we didn't score on this side. Matter of fact, he may have turned it over or a shot got blocked, but he came right back. Didn't compound the problem, which we've done in the past this year. Compounded the problem. One mistake leads to about two or three, but he didn't let it affect him. He just comes down, dives from behind. We get the ball. We go. We score. It, it was just a huge momentum. There's that word momentum for you, Nate. Huge momentum swing for us to stay in that game. Going back to Mike, you mentioned sometimes there's you know not the consistency that you might be looking for. Is that a lapse in concentration sometimes? And also, you've mentioned a few times uh, his body. Is he is he at 100 percent yet? I would say he's still um, he's not at 100 percent. I, I, I kind of said it at the end here. It's one day at a time. Um, physically, mentally, we still got to continue to to work with him to make sure he's the best Mike Watch Mike Watkins that he can be, best version of himself. And we're working towards that. I don't know if you saw this on Big Ten Network the other day, but one of the analysts was saying how your team might be the best one in eleven team the conference has ever had. Um, I know you talk about how there's no moral victories, but does it feel at at all good to get some recognition that even though you only have one in one in the conference, that people do recognize the talent that you have on 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 the roster? Uh, not really. That's nice of them to say, but. You know, we, we wish we were in a different situation right now. I do agree our, our record does not reflect how hard or competitive we are playing. Um, but we'll keep working at it, keep getting better. It's almost six years to the day that you had that Michigan upset. What do you remember about that night and what sort of <laughs> things can you take oh, from it was that? relief. <laughs> were we 0 for 12? I think it was more relief than anything. Uh Honestly, I don't remember, and I remember a lot. I remember uh, we hit some big threes at the top of the key. I do remember that. I know we slowed down Trey Burke as much as we could. Uh, Mitch McGarry, if I recall, the, the the team that they had, they were a really good team. So we did some, some really good things, really s stayed with it. Um, but it was pretty amazing to see the, the students come out and rush the court and things like that. Uh, and the fact that the students really showed up for an 0-12 team was awesome, too. Which we need them to do tomorrow night, especially if the weather hits. They came out. They supported us for Purdue. Love to see them again tomorrow night, 8.30. Even if we do have a, if we do have a day off, that gives you more excuse. Go do what you got to do during the day. Show up here at 8.30. PJ will feed you many chicken wings. Nachos. Oh, it's nacho. Sorry, nacho night. Nacho night. My bad. I don't want to get in trouble. Uh, yeah, uh, hey, I, I did that eight years ago. I'll buy some Big Macs. Let's go. That means we scored a lot of points. Well, then it wasn't that many. No, no. So you mentioned you need the fans to come out. How much does that truly help the players, especially the younger guys, to be playing in front of a raucous crowd like that? It does. It, it helps. I mean, we go, we, we're on the road. I mean, it is home court advantage. There's no doubt. And that affects everybody, right? So if, if and we play well on the road. We do. We, we actually feed off of it a little bit. 
Um, so it, it would be great if the students could come out because I know it might be hard for people from Harrisburg and Altoona with the weather. So if the students can come out and support us, man, that would be huge. And that gives them a good feeling like oh, the, our, our peers are here to support us. They, they recognize, like you're saying, that we are playing good basketball, that we are in every game, that we're right there. We just need, you know, a good bounce, a, a big-time rebound, a made free throw, something to, to kind of go our way.